Baseball on Comcast Sportsnet, part of the NBC Sports Group. Every night, win or lose, this group of A's have displayed how much they enjoy playing the game. Since the start of June, they have treated the fans to a green collar brand of baseball that have led them the most wins in the big leagues and the surprise team in the majors. Today, the green and gold look to add on to their season high eight game winning streak. Brett Anderson is back stronger than ever, and he has been electric in his first two starts. The A's go for the sweep of the Red Sox next. Another beautiful day at the ballpark, and the A's fans, they're here to see the hottest team in baseball. A's have won eight in a row as they get set behind Brett Anderson to try to sweep the Boston Red Sox. It is also Hyundai Sunday on Comcast Sports at California, brought to you by your Bay Area Hyundai dealers. It's the A's and the Red Sox coming up on Comcast Sports at California. Hey again, everybody. Welcome to Oakland A's Baseball, along with Ray Fossey. I'm Glenn Kuyper. Well, the hitting has really been the story the last three games. A's scoring runs in bunches, but should never forget about the pitching game. This afternoon, Brett Anderson goes to the mound, Ray. His two starts so far, terrific. Yeah. In Cleveland, just two hits in seven innings. It's amazing. It's like acquiring a pitcher at the trading deadline, because Brett Anderson coming back after 14 months. This will be his third start, but against Cleveland, just like against the Minnesota Twins, did a great job. He had ground ball outs. He had 11, so 24 in the two games but also the strikeouts. He did a great job, and if you think about how long he was out, there's the big break of ba breaking ball, the curveball, the slider, change up, all working very effectively for Brett Anderson. But I think the most important thing, he's healthy, he's recovering nicely after the first two starts. And for the Red Sox, it would be Daisuke Matsusaka. Remember he signed the big six-year contract? Well, this is the final year of that yeah. contract, right? He was good early in his career at the Red Sox, but then injuries started to take over. And the injuries, that's been the biggest problem for him. One start against the A's this year. Remember, he came out edge for just 20 28 pitches with a stiff neck. So Matsusaka pitching. A couple of guys coming off surgeries. We've seen what Brett Anderson can do. The A's hope to finish out this series against Matsusaka today. Of course, he has different ideas in this afternoon's game, but they know the way he pitches. He's very slow and deliberate in his windup. Of course, the A's will be ready for him. And the Red Sox know they are indeed facing the hottest team in baseball, the Oakland A's, looking for their ninth consecutive win. It is also Breast Cancer Awareness Day here at the Coliseum. So a very nice pregame ceremony going on as we speak. And we're getting set for the ball game. It'll be the A's and the Red Sox coming up.
Football on Comcast Sportsnet California is brought to you by AT&T, the nation's largest 4G network. AT&T, rethink possible. By Toyota, check out the great deals at your local Toyota dealer today. And by Xfinity, home of the most live sports. Welcome back to the Coliseum as we are just moments away. A's going for the sweep of the Red Sox. Lineup cards being exchanged. A's wearing the all whites this afternoon. Harkening back to the old days, right? Sunday wedding down whites. That's right. But they, since we wore the pants all the time, they looked like a sport coat because <laughs> those white tops were beautiful. <laughs> Game time weather brought to you by the Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk. Get to the beach. The admission free boardwalk is open daily. Beautiful day. 69 degrees. Just a very light breeze. Not a cloud in the sky. So perfect Sunday afternoon for baseball in the East Bay. As Brett Anderson has taken them out as he's in the middle of his warm up tosses as he gets set to take on the Boston Red Sox. Here's the lineup for the Red Sox. Pedro Siriaco is going to play left field today, and he's going to bat leadoff. Podsednik will hit second, and then Pedroia, Ross, Mauro Gomez is at third. Lavernway, Avilas, Loney, and Iglesias. Brent Anderson, his third start of the season. It's been Minnesota, gave up a run on the first inning. Cleveland, so in the last 13 innings, he's given up zero runs with a 0.64 earned run average. I'm sure he looks back to the 2009 season at Fenway Park. A shutout at Fenway against the Red Sox. Spectacular performance by the left-hander. Of course, well documented. 14 months on the disabled list. Tommy John surgery. But he is back and looking better than ever. He's lost a lot of weight. And he's pitching extraordinarily well. Ace defense today. As Cespedes in left. Crispin center. Reddick in right. And Donaldson, Drew, Pennington, and Moss on the infield. Norris is doing the catching. So Siriaco digs in. And we are ready for baseball. Couldn't ask for a better day. They talked about the warmth in the area and I think we're experiencing it here. So Anderson's first pitch of the ball game is a strike to Siriaco hitting 327 with a couple of home runs. This one chopped slowly. Big hop for Pennington, and that's out number one. So, Brett Anderson in his first two starts has allowed just six hits in 14 innings. And just a couple of walks. Calling balls and strikes is Jerry Davis, and he's the crew chief. Laughing because Brett Anderson was exchanging baseballs and it was into the right handed batter's box and Podsegnik wanted to bunt the ball towards third base. I mean, that's a little bit loose, but I would say that as people said, where Brett Anderson was returning, he faced Minnesota, not so good, Cleveland, not so good, Red Sox, but as well as he has pitched, I don't think it really matters who he would be pitching against. There's the change of balls and Podsegnik said, that looks like a good ball to bunt. Pull the back back. Two and one now to Pod Sednik, hitting 344. Pod Sednik, this is his 41st game. He chops this one over the mound. Stephen Drew throws out Pod Sednik. Two ground ball outs here in the yeah. first inning. 13 in his first start, 11 in the second, and two in the first inning of this game. And you look at Brent Anderson's ability to strike out batters when he needs to. The hard slider and curveball down and in, but he turns the ball over and gets ground balls. And you can see the percentage of ground ball outs in his career 9, 10, 11, 50% plus. And then, of course, this year, almost 75. Dustin Pedroia steps in, takes a strike. And there's a line drive the right field the base hit so breaking ball and Pedroia does a nice job of hitting just goes the other way. So there's your first hit in the ball game and a curveball that's left up in the strike zone and it's thrown hard and Pedroia stayed on it perfectly especially as opposite field hitting. Number seven, 
Derek Jeter, probably the best. The Yankees going opposite field, but Dustin Pedroia right in the mix. Brandon Moss, he said, it's hard for me, Brandon Moss, to root for a perfect game because then I don't have anybody to talk to. And I said, it's better that you don't because you want your pitchers to do well. He said, I know that, but he said, I just like to talk. And I said, guys like to listen to you. So it's not so much you're having a conversation. He says, I know. They listen to me. Sure. But he's living the dream. And, of course, a lot of former teammates that see him with the Red Sox this weekend. And they're very proud of the way he has performed for the athletics this year. Oh, one pitch to Cody Ross is inside. Ross hitting 275, 19 home runs, 67 runs batted in. Ross has been very good against left handed pitching this year. And 11 home runs against lefties. Well, the Red Sox at one time. Yeah, of course, Ross is. I mean, you think about Manny Ramirez hitting cleanup for the Red Sox when they had the good, good hitters at good teams with David Ortiz right there as well. You wouldn't even be thinking about throwing over Pedroia Steelen, but that's a different Red Sox now. Popped up. It's going to be a long run. Pennington, Reddick, and it's going to be Pennington who gets there. He's got it. Side retired. A hit and a runner left. No score after a half an inning. Bottom of the first. Now let's check out their lineup. And here it is. Chris, Smith, Reddick, Cespedes, Moss, Donaldson, Drew, Norris, and Pennington. Dice game, Matsusaka, his second start against the A's this year, July the 2nd. Here at the Coliseum was his first. And, of course, everybody knows the Japanese-born pitcher, the Red Sox. One and three record, 5'10 earn run average, and he has not made a lot of starts this year coming off the Tommy John surgery and rehabbing a lot this season. Had the neck problem back on that uh, second. It's pretty good. Syriaco, Potsednik, Ross in the outfield. Gomez, Iglesias, Pedroia, Loney on the infield. Lavernway is the catcher. So Matsusaka's ready, so is Coco Chris, bottom of the first. First pitch is outside to Coco Chris, hitting 260 with 10 home runs, 39 runs batted in. Three for nine in the series. Let off the game of the home run last night. Phoenix Dubrock, one two fastball, try to get it inside and up, but left it, left it right there in the wheelhouse of Coco Crisp. His 10th of the season, 7th career walk off. And Brandon Inge, who 
might have been in his land. Well, no, I think he's going to be around, even though he's not going to be able to play. It's too bad about Brandon Engine's right shoulder. Well, his name was listed on the lineup sheet. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, it's a September call-up. They do not have to DL him. It's a good point. Then just it, it sounds like great. Like I mean, he he could hit if he absolutely yeah. had to. A's needed him. That's it. He could do that. He can hit. Exactly right. It's tough for him to throw. Later in the week, he's uh, making arrangements for the surgery. For he said it's about a six-month recovery time, and so that's why, as I mentioned about staying in the month of September and. But uh, he said the recovery time is so lengthy that he wants to try to get it done as quickly as possible. And it sounds like in maybe Inge opening up a little bit more about the, the shoulder situation that maybe it was even bothering him more than yeah. than he was letting out of the guy wanted to play. Well, he said he wanted to see this. Did I do something different? And that's when he went down. He felt it pop out and and he kind of smiled and knew at that time and said that's it. But uh, remarkable, and I think his comment, and whenever he mentioned to Bob Melvin about being around to bunt, whatever that he could offer, even if he can't play, but his comment was, "quote I'd take a bullet for the man, for the bad of Bob Melvin." That's the respect that Bob Melvin has from his players, and especially the guy who, the veteran Brandon Inge, who's been the Detroit Tigers and now with the Athletics, but he respects what Bob Melvin has brought to this club, and he wants to continue to be a part of it. Three and two to Coco Crisp with Seth Smith waiting in the on deck circle. So now we're ready. And the 3 2 pitch is low, and Coco Crisp has a leadoff walk. Well, you know, it's very similar to what he did in Chicago. This was last night. After he hurt his shoulder, what does he do? Hits a double to right field, driving in a couple of runs. He stands at second base as Mike Gallego waving home the second runner. And First with uh, the, <laughs> the Bernie man in the house. Chuck Brandon Inge did, but uh, he would re remove himself from the game that he basically just could not throw. But remarkably, just a carbon copy of his game in Chicago when it originally popped out. And kind of the one thing he said, too, and I don't know if it's part of what you were going to continue to say, but the left shoulder, which he's had problems, similar problems, but it's different because it's a non-throwing shoulder. Yeah. And, and that's the difference. And. That's what he has to deal with. He has to be able to throw, and the way his shoulder is right now, it's a little bit tough. Want to know to Seth Smith? One's rolled foul. Chicago, it originally happened. He, great diving stop, taking extra bases away, and that's when it popped out. And then he basically pulled the shoulder down. He knew what had happened. But stayed in the game and drove in for what would be the go ahead run to right field. Scoring Cespedes, who had the hustle single to ground ball to shortstop. That was, of course, after Johnny Gomes had tied it off Thornton. This one's hit to right center and hit well. Potsednik going back. He's at the wall, and that baby is gone. Two nothing athletics. <laughs> They it can, is. They can do no wrong. Hyundai Sunday, Seth Smith. Kai, that is the sixth home run he's hit on a Sunday, which is Hyundai Sunday. And he does it again this afternoon. And he knew it was gone, even though Pensendik went back. But a very good shot once again by Seth Smith over the 388 mark up into the seats of the bleachers. He definitely knew it was gone. Sixth Hyundai Sunday home run for Seth Smith. Incredible. But more incredibly, 
than that is the fact that they're doing it again. Yep. As you said perfectly, Coco let off the game last night, so he gets a walk in. Seth Smith hitting second, hits a two run shot. So the A's now with 12 home runs in their last four games. They had a stretch like this in June. Remember the Colorado, or they just kept hitting home runs. It was yeah. unbelievable. He's now with 154 home runs on the year. Reddick swings and misses. The ball gets away from Laverneway. He's going to have to hurry. He throws just in time to get Reddick, and that's out number one. So that'll bring up Cespedes. <laughs> Brandon in shakes with the left hand with sunflower seeds in his right. <laughs> you just never know what's going to happen in no, that dugout. No. And you know, even though he might not be able to play a lot, Brandon Inge is very important in this club, just as veteran leadership, his status, and keeping the guys loose and that's important you need somebody like that especially in this tough month of September but the A's are taking off on <laughs> grown men acting like kids yeah. and just enjoying it and that's kind of the way of staying loose and it's important part of the game especially this time of the season. Cespedes hits one to right. He'll reach for it a little bit. Ross coming in. He's got it for out number two. Yeah, you could really go back to Seth Smith's last home run. It was on a Saturday, but the game was supposed to be played on Sunday in Florida. It was against Hellicks. Okay, so, I'll, I'll give know, you that one. You, you I'll take give that? You that one. Yeah, because yeah. I, I kind of made a mental note of that. You know, that was an unusual series because the RNC and no. Sunday was off, but that should have been a Sunday. Okay. So it was a Hyundai Saturday Sunday. Okay. It's been a theme for you this yeah. year. Right. Doing I mean, it's, nice it started right at the beginning, back in April, you know. Keeping track of that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I like it. Like I think these, it's great. Like these Sunday Hyundai sponsors, you know, you got to do it. It's a sidebar. That's right. That's, that's a good word. Oh, and two to. Brandon Moss. Big night on Friday night for Moss. Three run shot, three run home run off of Matsuzaka through just the 28 pitches. But this is what he did in the alternate gold jerseys. A free run home run into the bleachers. Matsusaka would be short. He'd go on the disabled list the next day. Reddick had taken him deep in the first. And Moss, a former Red Sox, again got him. Well, Moss this year against the Red Sox, it's absolutely ridiculous. He's 10 for 13 with three doubles, three homers, nine RBIs, seven runs scored in four games. Four games. <laughs> four games. That's your theme, huh? Yeah, What's well, he going to do today? <laughs> yeah, exactly. This is the final game of the season series between the, the Red Sox and the A's. And the A's lost the first game in Boston against the Red Sox mm -hmm. this season, and they've not lost since. Good pitch there as Moss strikes out. Seth Smith, a two run homer. So the A's continue to pound the baseball and they lead two to nothing after one.
Brett Anderson gave up two out hit to Pedro in the first inning. He'll face Gomez, Lavarnwe, and Avilas. And for any pitcher to pitch effectively at home in the first inning, then see run support in the bottom half of the inning, you take the mound the second, and there are two runs. On the road, it's even better when yep. your team scores in the first inning before you take the mound. Up and away, two and one. Well, Anderson has not had a huge amount of run support in his two wins. The scores were four to one and three to nothing. He was down one to nothing against the Twins when Revere scored on the wild pitch, and that's it. But uh, the shutdown innings have been perfect, 100%. This one's hit very high to center. Coco Crisp is under it. Oh, Gomez is retired. One out. Okay, one of the best things a pitcher can do with a power hitter who's thinking on three and one, I'm going to hit a home run. You pitch him away. And Long's carrying well. Look where this pitch is outside, and he tries to pull it, opens up, hits it towards the end of the bat, hits it to the deepest part of the park. Great location on a 3 1. And simply Gomez, maybe thinking Fenway Park short green, uh, green monster, not at this Coliseum center field. So great pitching by Brett Anderson, staying to the outside part of the plate. Here's Ryan LaVarnway. And he rips one towards second. Pennington backhands the one hopper. And that's out number two. A very hard hit ball, but Pennington was shaded that way. Well, that's a spray chart. Mike Gallego gets all the reports on how hitters hit the ball based on the pitches they get. And Cliff Pennington, a hard hit ball, showing the Exmo how it takes him to the outfield grass, but a very, very strong arm, able to handle. The runner in plenty of time. Exmo brought to you by Cash Creek Casino Resort. First pitch to Mike Gavilas is a strike. Gavilas is the designated hitter today. The Red Sox in this series have scored three runs on just 13 hits. The A's have scored 27 runs on 30 hits. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. And that's a very quick three up, three down inning. Bottom of the second coming up. 2 nothing Athletics.
Today's baseball on Comcast Sports at California is brought to you by Roaring Camp Railroads. Whether it's a steam train through the Redwood Forest or the beach train to Santa Cruz, Roaring Camp is the ride of a lifetime. RoaringCamp.com. Two nothing. The A's lead the Red Sox. Trains cruising through Jack London yeah. Square. All right. Hear the horn. Sound it loudly. First pitch to Donaldson is a strike. So Donaldson back in the lineup. So that's good news with the injury to Inge. He passed the test, the running test. Said it's the first test he's ever passed in his life. And it was a good one to pass. <laughs> <laughs> Hip flexor bothering him a little bit. A lot of sunscreen today yeah. and people enjoying the, the nice day in the sunshine, but repair as well. Fly ball toward Ross in right. Cody Ross is under. Josh Donaldson running. This was at first base. And it would kind of re injure it, rounding second and slowing down and getting to third base and came out of the game. It's time of the year, and when a club is successful, you want to be in the lineup and you're going to play through a lot of things. I think Donaldson, one day off, one game off, and he's back in there. Here's Stephen Drew who takes inside. Drew got a day off yesterday. He had started all 10 games the A's had played since being acquired from the Diamondbacks. And he drives one to right. And that baby is gone. Three nothing athletics. They are just teeing off. Well, Kai, Josh Reddick and Stephen Drew were watching some video, both commenting about daytime baseball at the Coliseum. We've talked about it, how well the ball carries. He said, I want to experience that. And I said, daytime, you got a chance to experience it. And he gets a fastball from Matsusaka belt high. And remember the Diamondbacks, he showed power. And he showed it there with a great swing on a ball that traveled. When he first came up, he was hitting a lot of balls to the left side. Left field, left center, seemed to start to pull the ball a little more, and that one was was a great swing. So his first home run as an athletic, his third this season. A couple with the Diamondbacks. Make it 13 home runs now in the last four games. And that one's lined but foul as Derek Norris just got out ahead a little bit. Just a great swing from a left hander moved down to the lineup. He's been hitting second now hitting seventh in the A's lineup this afternoon after the night off last night and takes advantage of a fastball middle of the plate. I don't think that ball needed much help from daytime or nighttime. <laughs> down the back. One and two now to Derek Norris hitting 205 with five home runs. Norris did not play on Friday night. Guitars hit a couple of home runs. Norris did play yesterday. Guitars had a two home run game, five runs batted in, and uh, sit down, George. Yeah. yeah. But he caught back to back games and did well. And Norris last night, a couple of RBI hits. So two and two the count with Pennington in the on deck circle. Drew with a home run for the ace here in the second inning. Line drive right back to Matsusaka. Kind of a soft line drive if there is such a thing. Well, it's scary for a pitcher because you follow through. You cannot tell how hard a ball is hit. Softly, hard, whatever. And Matsusaka with that deliberate delivery and then a the ball back at him. You see him jump. And it probably would have gone to Pedroia, but 
the TFP pitch with fundamental practice. They work on it, but you cannot simulate a ball hit back at you as far as how hard it's going to be hit. First pitch to Pennington drops low. Pennington started to string some hits together. Seven hits in his last 10 at bats. I think for both he and Rosales, except in the fact that it's going to be at second base, of course, they can play any of the positions, but with the addition of Stephen Drew to the club, they're going to be playing second. And even Brandon Inge agreed to start taking some ground balls at second. In the event he would be needed there. Of course, that will not happen now with right shoulder bothering him. But Stephen Drew is going to get the bulk of the time playing shortstop. And Brandon Inge, if they can use his bat, they'll do it. Pennington fouls it right at the plate. They're underway in Seattle. The Angels and the Mariners are scoreless in the second inning. That's Weaver. And Iwakuma Weaver is 16 and 3. So the Angels going for the sweep up in Seattle. Angels have won nine out of their last 11. So I'm sure they feel like they're starting to make their move. That's why starting tomorrow night it's going to be a great series against the Angels. Actually, tomorrow daytime on Labor Day. So day night day. Pennington strikes out another home run for the Athletics. This one by Stephen Drew. So we're headed to the third. Three nothing A's. Two home runs by the A's. Smith and Drew, 3 0, top of the third. On Breast Cancer Awareness Day here at the Coliseum. Let everybody know that the A's raised $53,600 today through their annual Breast Cancer Awareness Day. Proceeds benefiting American Cancer Society. Loney is retired. So breast cancer awareness day always a big day here at the ballpark. Very nice pregame festivities. Nice with nice with hundreds of cancer survivors down on the field. So a good day and again fifty three thousand six hundred dollars raised. So a great job by the athletics. Here's Jose Iglesias.
count is one and one. Glacius 0 for 12 this year. And McCarthy got him with the big out in the first game of the series Friday night. Hit a couple of runners on base. The second inning ended up semi line drive to second baseman for the final out. So McCarthy pitched well. AJ Griffin last night did a great job. So McCarthy, the veteran, now in a rotation of four rookies and Brandon McCarthy. It's remarkable. One and two to Iglesias. Lays off that one. Siriaco, the leadoff hitter, waiting in the on deck circle. One out here in the top of the third. Good breaking ball from Anderson. I stand corrected. I'm putting Brett Anderson in the rookie category. He's not, obviously. He's a rookie this year because he's coming back from Tommy John surgery, but he I has know been around. Saying. Yeah, he's been around. So. Brett's doing a great job, McCarthy and the three rookies. Toward right field, Reddick playing extremely shallow, and he makes the catch. What a great play by Josh Reddick, and knowing that the opposite field hitting of Iglesias is really not going to be so powerful that it's going to go over his head, so he's playing shallow, takes away a hit. And great outfield play. Didn't even have to go into a slide dive or anything, caught it chest high. And you got to see it in X mode. Gonna do it again with Sirocco. Curveball stays a bit outside. Well, there's no way Glacius shouldn't say no way, but the chance of him hitting the ball over Reddick's head and right field is very, very slim. Yeah. And I think we would agree that. Needs to be more opposite outfielders playing more shallow no with, with guys because if, if they can hit the ball over your head, you know, you, you know anyway whether they can or cannot, but most of them can't in today's world. One time it seemed like guys did that, but <laughs> this is a different time. That one is lined to right, and that one's going to get down in front of Reddick. Second hit for the Red Sox. You know, Josh Reddick plays shallow as he has been doing. He has to be thinking in the back of his mind. You get a slow runner and taking it for granted it's an easy base hit. He may try to throw him out of first. We have seen that happen. But not with this guy. He can fly. He just want to make sure he kept the ball in front of him, keeping the runner at first base out of scoring position. Pod Sednik swings at the first pitch. Side retired. A hit and a runner left. Bottom of the third coming up. 3 0 A's.
today driven by Chevrolet. One lucky fan will win a new 2013 Chevrolet Spark. Enter for your chance to win at OaklandAthletics.com slash Chevy Spark. Enjoy the pregame fiesta featuring Chevy's ride and drive event, live lucha libre wrestling, mariachi music, and a player appearance. 10,000 fans will also receive an Atletico's tote bag. For more information, go to OaklandAthletics.com slash Chevy Spark. Another exciting day at the Coliseum. All days are exciting. Not a lot of home games remaining. What's the number? I don't know. 29 games left total after today. Oh, that's leading the end of that. You know, we got three against the Angels, three against the uh, Orioles, schedule. and <laughs> six the last yeah. six of the season. 12 more. I mean, you've got the wild card, and I thought you had to schedule down pat. Seventeen road games, twelve home games. So you're right. Four more series. I mentioned the Angels coming in tomorrow. Seven of the next ten games will be against the Angels, and then the A's will not play them again this year. Three two to Coco Crisp. Hit hard, but foul. There's the West standings and the wild card standings. The Rangers have already won their game today. Great, the Indians helped out last night in hanging on to defeat the Rangers in Cleveland in their losing streak. And there's another walk for Coco Crisp. He walked and scored in the first. I'm well, talking to Coco Crisp last night, and, and I think we both agreed at listening to him. And of course, at the top of the batting order, how he makes things happen. Lead off home run last night, also a trip away from the cycle. Got on base, scored runs. And this afternoon, doing a little bit different, being very patient, drawing some walks. A lot of times he'll go up swing to the first pitch if he. Deems the pitch is uh, hittable and. And there he goes. Good jump. No throw and another stolen base. Yeah. 31st steal of the year for Coco Crisp. Well he read Matsusaka perfectly with a high slow leg kick and. It was so. Such a slow move and such a great jump by Coco Crisp Lavarnway. Just walk the ball back to the pitcher. No chance. So now Coco in scoring position with nobody out. Says Smith Homer in the first. Coco dancing around big time. After the walk by Coco Chris Seth Smith a fastball belt high and crushed he knew it. Amazing watching Potsedna go after you think he was going to be just over the wall but it was well up in the bleachers. So that was home run number 13 a little ice shower. Foul back. He went after that high fastball. That's where the concentration of the hitter has to really be on the pitcher and not so much in this case if Coco Crisp is second base. If Matsusaka did not look back twice, Coco probably would have stolen the first pitch to uh, Seth Smith after he reached second base, but he looked back and that's when Coco went back. But when you see a runner dancing, that's in direct line of the hitter looking at the pitcher. Uh, he'll probably just sit still with a couple of strikes on Seth Smith. And a late oh. timeout call in Matsusaka. Tried to hold up and the ball came out of his hand. That never makes a pitcher happy. And you know what? You can't really blame him. 
but he that's said too that's too late. Yeah, and, and all he's doing is looking at second base and sure as a hitter, Seth Smith wants to ask for time, but an umpire should say no. Yeah. Just make him say because when the pitcher comes in the set position, he could throw any time. It's just not fair to the pitcher. It's not, and especially you've got Tommy John surgery and you know various injuries makes it even more difficult to allow that to happen. Backhanded by Lavarnway. Yeah, just because you request time yeah. as a hitter does not yeah. mean it has to be granted by the umpire. It's a good point because what hitters will do, they'll ask, but they won't back out of the batter's box <laughs> until they are given because you end up backing out, and that's when the umpire does not give you the time. And if you're a catcher, you hope the pitcher can throw a strike, and that happens. Reddick in the on deck circle. Good swing there by Smith. Well, Matsusaka is 31 years old, Ray, and he will be a free agent after this year. And I got to believe if he had a good month of September that would certainly help his cause if he yeah. indeed wants to stay over here and pitch yeah. in the big leagues. I mean 31 years old. I mean just off Tommy John surgery. Yeah there you're right about the month of September and I think the Red Sox would be first in line to try to resign. Sure. And they should be getting John Lackey back. He's missed the whole season because of similar surgery. He's obviously not going to see anything close to the annual salary that he's earning now, thanks to the six year contract he got with the Red Sox. That one's lined to right, and Ross will play it on a hop. Coco stops at third, and the A's got action again. First and third, nobody out. Well, that's a team guy right there. Seth Smith hit a two run home run his first at bat, but he gets a runner at second. Nobody out. His main objective is to pull the ball. Almost drives him in, hit it too hard in front of Ross in right field. But got another similar pitch, middle of the plate, belt high, and Seth Smith is hot. But he wanted to make sure he pulled the ball. Coco had to hold up to make sure the ball landed safely in right field. So our RBI opportunity for Reddick, who struck out swinging in the first inning. That was right after the Smith home run. First pitch is low. Reddick is two for ten in this series. But one of those hits a grand slam. Strike call, and it pops out of the glove of Lavarnway. I showed you the numbers in our open about Matsusaka. His first two years with the Red Sox, 33 and 15. The next four years, including this year, 17 and 18. He was good his first two years. He was. Helped the Red Sox win a World Series. That one hit toward left center field. Potsednik on the run, and he makes the catch. Coco tags up. He'll come in to score. Reddick with a sacrifice fly. It's four to nothing athletics. Now the stolen base by Coco Crisps. Seth Smith getting him to third and Josh Reddick bringing him in. It's a good at bat too by Josh Reddick with a pitch away from him. Stayed inside the ball. Exmo bat great position. Watch him bring the hands in and just drive it deep enough to left center. Coco at third does not have to be very deep. That clear though, though plenty of depth to get Coco in. 
Cespedes taking all the way. Pitch drops down and away. Cespedes hit a fly ball to right field. This one headed toward right again. Playable for Ross. Cody Ross has it. That's out number two. So Cespedes is 0 for 2, and that'll bring up Brandon Moss. First three innings, Daisuke Matsusake has gotten in trouble at the beginning of each inning, but settled down and really given up nothing. But he's taken advantage of the mistakes he's made early in the inning. Well, you walk the leadoff hitter yeah. in the first inning, and then you walk yeah. the lineup's leadoff hitter again in the third. Nothing but trouble. And Crisp has scored both times. Brandon Moss struck out in his first at bat. So 15 home runs for Moss. Chris Carter not playing today. Carter has 13 home runs. Chris Carter talking last night about the home run. He hit it too high. Yeah, way too high. <laughs> guy said, but it's a home run. He says, yeah, but, you know, it's just wondering if he's going to make it. I said, Hank Aaron hit 755 like that. Just get it over the fence. It doesn't have to be that deep. But Brandon Moss went second deck against Aaron Cook. He just went down and crushed it. Down and in, and he went down and got it. And second deck, not a lot that you see here. Maybe that's why Chris Carter said what he said. He saw Moss <laughs> go second deck and figured he's bigger and stronger than than Moss that he should have been doing it. Two and two to Brandon. And now full count. 62 pitches thrown by Matsusaka with two outs in the third inning. Well, the Red Sox bullpen has already thrown 10 in the third innings in this series. Plenty of arms down there, of course, this time of year. The Sevis is down there. Yeah. If he pitches today, <laughs> something's definitely up. <laughs> that one's hit hard through the shift. Base hit. Smith digging for third, and they'll hold him there. First and third, two outs for Donaldson. And again, great extension. The follow through by Brandon Moss went down and got it. And when you have a shift and you see three guys to the right of second or near second and to the right side, Matsuzaka looked like he pulled his glove back thinking he might have a chance to, to catch the ball. He should have because it went right through the infield. Randy Neiman, the pitching coach, comes out. There's Savis, and he's had an interesting series last night. Well, this is what really didn't sit too well with Dustin McCoy. This is even worse. And something Maki and Loney there to make the play. And then he's harping at the umpire, and then Pedroia had some things to say in the dugout. Not surprised. So he's tearing up a baseball today, seeing how many twines of baseball is around each baseball. I'm not even going to say things are unraveling for him. I'm not going to say it. I, I'm not going That's to. Good one. I like yeah. that. But a seven threw 23 pitches in one inning on Friday. He threw 63 pitches in three innings mm. yesterday. And for the one-time closer, came in both games very early in the games. Something's not right. That, Swing and a miss by Donaldson. I'll say this: Andrew Bailey, who we know. From playing with the A's, came in last night, throwing 95, 96. <laughs> you can understand why Andrew Bailey yeah. resumed his role as a closer. Injuries, you usually don't lose your job because of an injury, and Bailey throwing very strong. One and two now to Donaldson. Donaldson trying to jerk that outside pitch yeah. to left field. 
And isn't that a huge hole on the right side? That is a monstrous <laughs> hole. Yeah. Where he's being pitched outside, and he says he's at his best whenever he hits the ball to right field. Well, here's an opportunity for him to do it. Donaldson fly ball the right field in the second inning. One for five in the series. That one hit a home run, three RBIs. Well, he's still a pull guy, yeah. but he will shoot one to right field occasionally. Seen him do that a lot more later in the season than early in the year. Now full count, so that'll get Moss moving at first. Maloney will play behind. And missed badly, and it's another walk. If you aren't an A's season ticket holder, you should be, and you can still get 2012 postseason rights. Just place a deposit on a 2013 A's ticket plan. For more information, call 510-638-GO-A's or go to OaklandAthletics.com slash deposit. So the A's at the base is loaded, and they have a chance to bust this baby open early. Watch his socket through a cut fastball three and two, and Josh Donaldson wouldn't bite. First pitch to Drew is low. Smith is at third, Moss at second, Donaldson at first. That one right in there, first drive. As he's watching Matsusaka, he has a, a decent enough fastball. It's not as overpowering as it once was when he first came to the stage, started pitching for the Red Sox, but I don't think he uses it enough, especially trying to locate it. That is great hearing that Mariano Rivera with Rafael Soriano, Rivera out for the season, but he told Soriano, he says, You're not going to use your fastball enough. You're throwing too many sliders. Mm. Started throwing more fastballs, started getting more outs, more saves, which is what his job is for the Yankees this season. Line drive, base hit, left field. One run scores, and they're going to hold Moss. Stephen Drew comes through. It's five to nothing, Athletics. Great opposite field hitting, and. Steven Drew with Brandon Moss at second. Watch Moss at the top of your screen as he's approaching. See the almost interference. Third base umpire is watching. I don't think Moss is going to score anyway, but he had to avoid the third baseman who came over. Gomez got in his line as he's running. Bam, right there. If he hits him, he scores. It's interference on the infield. You have to allow the runner to run the bases. And Moss went around it, but I think the ball was hit too hard for him to score anyway. So Drew with the RBI single. Base is still loaded for Norris. Breaking ball in for a strike. So Homer and an RBI single for Stephen Drew. Pulls one in the seats in right field. Goes opposite field with a fastball away from him to drive in a run. Norris way out in front. Launches one well into the second deck. It was it Saltomaki went third deck off of the tarps? Was that who did it Friday night? Uh, was it Saltomaki? Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, just got out in front a little bit. <laughs> just a bit. Yeah. No one two to Derek Norris who. In a line drive right back to Matsusaka, his first at bat.
So all kinds of problems for Matsusaka. Andrew Miller, left hander, is warming up. Through just 28 pitches in his only start against the A's this season before today, and already he's making his 77th in just the third inning this afternoon. Norris, good take. The Miller, he's been throwing for a while, so his position tells you that he's ready when called upon. And if Matsusaka doesn't get this guy, it may be Miller time. See that look on Bobby Valentine's face. Tough season for him as a first year manager of the Red Sox. Breaking ball, Norris strikes out, but the ace. Get two more runs, so we are headed to the fourth inning. A's five, a Red Sox, nothing. Here's our trivia question. It's brought to you by AT&T. Who are the three major league teams that have a winning record in the last nine seasons? Give you the answer in just a little bit. Five nothing. The A's lead top of the fourth inning. The A's have won eight in a row. They've won 10 out of 11. They've won 14 out of 16. They're in one of those stretches, folks. Breaking ball from Anderson and a good one to Pedroia in first strike. Pedroia, Ross, and Gomez here in the fourth inning. Is that breaking ball again? This one. Is low. Pedroia had a base hit in the first inning. Amazing with Brett Anderson, the time he has had sitting down while well, his club scoring runs each of the first three innings. Set a lot of time on the bench, but he's come out throwing very well. Probably just trying to follow what A.J. Griffin did last night, his first start in over about a month anyway, been on the disabled list. So three and one now. Pedroia four for nine in the series. He's been one of the few offensive bright spots for Red Sox. This one bounced. Drew has it. And that's out number one. No equalizer three and one throw a two seam fastball and the hitter beats the ball on the ground. That's why Anderson no, makes him so good because he can get the ground ball outs. Six already today. 
And Brent Anderson, and we know it's not easy, but he can make it look easy. <laughs> Well, in between innings, just sits and relaxes in the dugout and, yeah. and gets ready to go back out. First pitch in for a strike to Cody Ross. Cody Ross popped out to the second baseman in the first inning, and it's 0-2 to Cody Ross. Maybe it is easy. I don't know. <laughs> I think you described it best. The first two starts, not like there were blowouts, and he pitched so well. They were low scoring games, yep. relatively low, and but he took whatever run support he got and ran with it. Ross calls a late timeout. Ross is one for eight in this series. Red Sox just do not have a lot of hits. Everybody, Valentine manager in Japan, he probably knows enough Japanese to speak to Matsusaka. During every home game this season, the A's will sell authentic game used and autographed memorabilia in the West Side Club of the Coliseum. Items include autographed baseballs and jerseys, game used helmets, bats, jerseys, and bases, lineup cards, and more. All items are authenticated under the MLB authentication program. A portion of the proceeds will benefit the Oakland A's community fund. So two outs here in the fourth, and here's Mauro Gomez. Gomez with a fly ball to center field. I just. I still just can't get over a doing a Red Sox game with. Names that you just don't Second. really know much about the players. I it's agree. never happened before for me. That's yeah. nothing against. Moral Gomez yeah. and the guys that are playing. It's just very strange. Right. No Euclid's no Ortiz. I mean. <laughs> Different. J, J D Drew, Els, um, yeah, J D Drew, yeah. of course Manny, many years, and Paratech. Talk, talking to Jerry Remy, and and uh, of course broadcasting, and he was a Red Sox and got to enjoy the 0-4, the first World Championship, but he said this year he felt that it was just a carryover from last September, as we talked about, yeah. and he has been broadcasting for many seasons. Toward Cespedes, who is under it, and that's a three up, three down inning for Brett Anderson, and another shutdown inning for Anderson. Five nothing in A's lead.
Reggie from Fresno asks, what does pitching from the stretch mean? <sighs> well, you have a windup when there's nobody on base. Here's the home run. The boss is pitching out of the windup from the right side and out of the stretch because the runner's on base on the left side. Identical pitches. Both left the yard. Oh, that was uh, Stephen Drew, I'm sorry, and Smith. But the pitcher pitches out of the stretch and there's runners on base. Mm -hmm. In the case of Travis Blackley, pitches out of stretch all the time. He's a reliever and starter. So you could do that. And that's going to be a bunt hit for Pennington. Dropped it down nicely. What you couldn't do is you couldn't pitch from the windup all the time. There's going to be a lot of stolen bases and a lot of, yeah. a lot of movement on the bases. Well, yeah, because as soon as you start the windup, the <laughs> runner can take off. It's a great bunt by Cliff Pennington and third base and Goldman is playing back. Now, I have a story for you about yeah. one of the really best left handed pitchers. Baseball back in the 70s by the name of Sam McDowell. Sam had four of the, the greatest pitches. And I think if Sam's listening, he can remember this. He was pitching such a great game and had a lead, but he didn't, he hardly had anybody on base. So when he finally got somebody on base, he said, I feel more comfortable pitching out of the windup. He just <laughs> continued to pitch out of the windup. Guy tails the second, goes to third, and he loses his shutout because he kept pitching out of the windup. But he could also guy get to third to strike him, strike him out. <laughs> In this case, he didn't though. I think he had a ground ball with the infield playing back. But, but no, you pitch out of the stretch because that means the runner cannot run until you you make a movement. And if the front foot can take off, of course, in Matsusaka, you could take a nap. He takes so long. Yes, he does. So one and one the count. 81 pitches for Matsusaka. A's have six hits. He's walked three. He has struck out four. And it convinced his manager in between innings that he was okay to pitch the fourth. Pennington runs. Varnway's throw is not in time. There's short hop. Iglesias dug it out, but Pennington beat the throw. So second steal in the game for the athletics their sixth steal in this series. Good job and Coco crisp taking the pitch bringing the bat back trying to distract the catcher maybe dead just momentarily as the ball was bouncing but Cliff Pennington going to the outside of the bag with the infielder taking the throw in front of the bag. Instead of going straight in and having the infielder apply the tag he goes to the outside and the swipe tag wasn't in plenty of time. Coco lost one to shell the left field. Siriaco is under it. He's got it. So Coco is retired. He cannot move Pennington from second base, and that's out number one. Angels and the Mariners still scoreless in the bottom of the fourth inning. Here's Smith who is homered and singled. He scored twice. As I gave you that update from Safeco, Jesus Montero just hit a home run. He's been swinging the bat yes, big has. time. Had a great month of uh, August. Yeah. So he just homered off Weaver. One nothing. Well, he's starting to look like the guy that Mariners were hoping they'd get when they made that the trade, and they were desperately needing a middle of the order hitter, and now he is hitting like a middle of the order hitter. And the home run probably was hit to right field. That's well, no, it wasn't, but I know what you're saying. <laughs> no, his, his power is unbelievable, especially at Safeco Field. See, he had that right field stroke because of Yankee Stadium when he was sure. with them last year briefly. 3 and 0 oh, now to Smith. Now 
outfield pretty much straight away for Smith. And there's another walk. So that is walk number four. And he really has not been sharp at any point in this game. The A's have had base runners in every inning. And even the second inning, the only hit he gave up in that second inning was all run. And this is a season you start talking about time of possession, but I think time of team on the field, the Red Sox by oh. by far have been out there a lot longer. Brett Anderson has been going through the lineup very quickly in the first four innings. Well, the A's have now outscored the Red Sox 32 to 3 in this series. So there's your time of possession. I think on a day like this that Bobby Valentine looks out and he said, I could have been doing Sunday night baseball. Yeah. <laughs> not having <laughs> sitting in a studio or to going this. to a ballpark. <laughs> yeah. Just watching baseball from our vantage point. And maybe most important, the outcome of the game means nothing to you. Go home, you don't Just feel about a thing. No post game press conference. Nothing. No explanation of what happened again. He's sick of the A's, I know that. He's seven and one this year against the Red Sox. Reddick. Nice swing, but fouls it straight back. Well, the Red Sox got swept in Anaheim to start nine game road trip on the West Coast. And they're in the midst of this game. He's trying to sweep. People up in the shade enjoying the game with a nice souvenir. But then they're going to Seattle, and that's no cakewalk against yep. the Mariners. Speaking of the Mariners, which is where the A's will be next weekend, as I did baseball math. Felix Hernandez pitched yesterday. Oh, yeah. So the Mariners will play Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday with an off day Thursday. So that means that Felix Hernandez is going to pitch. On Friday against the Athletics, another hit for the A's. Siriaco comes up throwing, and they're going to hold Pennington at third. Siriaco made a very nice throw. So Reddick with the hit, and the bases are loaded again. Well, he hit a sack fly to left center and takes the off-speed pitch. Matsusaka throws a splitter to change up and got one of those and hit it to left center. And Flip Pennington. Good base running and kind of hesitated because the ball was hit very hard. Sirocco, the third baseman left fielder, a very strong arm, got to it quickly. And Mike Gallego, even though he is aggressive, had to hold him up. Well, the A's are running to the bat rack again. Yeah. They now have seven hits. And here's Cespedes. First pitch is a bit high. So Felix Hernandez should pitch on Friday night against the Athletics at Safeco. So always oh, a pretty good scene up there when King Felix pitches. And if Jared Weaver's pitching today, he would pitch Thursday or Friday, depending on their off day, or uh, Friday or Saturday, and then he is will be in Anaheim following the Mariners, so they'll get him in Anaheim. In Anaheim it's yeah. a four-game series. You figure you're gonna get him in him. 80% chance you're gonna get him. Wow. You did that without a calculator. Oh, big time. Oh, yeah. Of course, I wrote it down before the game. <laughs> Cespedes has hit a pair of fly balls to right field. Only one out. Fastball down and in, and Cespedes had a good swing. Well, this is late in the season, and for his first season of Major League Baseball, Cespedes still a very, very strong swing. Gets the bad head through the zone. 
Start to go down to one knee like Adrian Beltre. He can hit him as far as Beltre. So two and one. And he got a fastball a little higher in the zone and he fouled it straight back two and two the count. Exmo just brought the hands in and very aggressively swing out at the high fastball with very good bat speed again. Bounce slowly. Pedroia charges. His only play will be at first. Pennington comes in to score, give Cespedes an RBI ground out, and give the A's a six to nothing lead. Well, Bobby jammed Valentine him. has seen enough. Jammed him. Two fly balls hit to the right side. This ground ball, but slowly enough, and with the speed of Cespedes, Pedroia had to make sure one out. So when it's time for a change, think speedy oil change and tune-up. Your oil change tune-up and smog experts. Miller coming in. Star Wars Fireworks Night presented by Kelly Moore Paints. Special field level tickets include a limited edition A's and Star Wars t-shirt featuring Yoda and visits from Star Wars characters. The post-game fireworks will be set to the music of Star Wars. One dollar from each special ticket will go to Stand Up to Cancer. For your tickets, get your tickets at oaklandathletics.com slash Star Wars. So that's coming up on Friday, September 14th. Jack, know who Yoda is or was? Not a big Star Wars guy his father was not a big Star Wars guy but I'm starting to get into it and I will be fully into it by the 14th of September <laughs> how's that <laughs> couldn't have said it better myself Andrew Miller comes in big left-hander Miller first appearance in this series and Chris Carter is hitting for Moss Carter pinched hit for Cliff Pennington in Cleveland with the bases loaded. And it's a matter of maybe just trying to get a hit to really break it open. The A's a nice lead as scored each of the first four innings. Not a good start for Dice K. Matsusaka. 97 pitches in three and two thirds innings. Six runs, but two more on the bases. It's 
So the A's have scored in every inning. Two in the first, one in the second, two in the third, one here in the fourth. Hard slider down and in, and Carter started, tried to stop, and then realized swung it over the top of it. And that one just a touch low, three and two. Smith is at third, Reddick at second. Carter fouls him straight back. Well, this is the towering drive that he wanted more of a line drive, but he's off guard and he got it. With that strong, you can hit him as high as you want. You can fight the teeth of the wind as they did in Texas, but last night, high and it made it. Carter swings and misses. Side retired. He's get another run. A couple of hits, a walk, and they strand two. Six nothing after four. Three Major League Baseball teams that have a winning record in each of the last nine seasons or longer. Yankees, 19 straight winning seasons. Red Sox, 14 straight. And the Phillies, nine. Now, what we're trying to tell you there is the Red Sox are in serious jeopardy. They are 10 games under the 500 mark. And the Phillies That's right. are in jeopardy. Last losing season was 1997. The Phillies are 64 and 69. The Red Sox did not make the postseason last year. They finished in third place, even though they won 90 games. But let's not forget, they did not make the postseason in 2010 either. They won 89 games and did not make it. Before that, six of seven years they were in with a couple of World Series titles. If you think about also the Monday game before they departed on this road trip, 782nd consecutive sellout yeah. in Fenway Park. Some of these players, the Red Sox, have never played at home in less of a sellout crowd. That's right. It, it may change, but you do 81 divided into 782. That's a lot of years consecutively that the Red Sox have sold out. So they go 80 some odd years without winning a world championship. Now they go forever with sellouts and they won in 04 07. And they've been selling out pretty consistently. We'll see what happens as the month of September when they return home. Three and two to Lavarnway. Swing and a miss on a breaking ball. Strikeout number three for Anderson. 
So he's just rolling along. Well, there's the confidence in a curveball. Lavardway had to be thinking, let's see, the A's are up six to nothing. I'm going to get a 3 2 fastball, and here comes Uncle Charlie. And even though it's out of the strike zone, it looked like a fastball, at least a strike when Lavardway had it approach the plate, but no contact. Peguero has homered for the Mariners, so they've hit a couple of home runs off Weaver. It's now two to nothing Seattle over the Angels. There's a strike. One and one the count to Avilas, who struck out in the second inning. Again, that's Weaver pitching for the Angels. The night game is the marquee pitching matchup in baseball with the White Sox at the Tigers. Detroit is going for the sweep and it's sale 15 and 5 for the White Sox Verlander 12 and 7 for the Tigers. So that'll be the night game and Detroit is making their move. They're now just one game back of the White Sox in that AL Central. One two pitch to Avilas shoots one foul right side. Two teams right behind the A's in those wild card standings, the Orioles and the Rays, and they both won. Avilas down the right field line, and it's foul. Hence the season of the Red Sox and the A's. Right That's there. exactly that right. says it all with that shot down the right field line. Just foul. Manny Gonzalez heading down as a first base umpire to make the call. This ball slicing, you figure. It's a base hit. Extra bases and a couple of inches to the right of the foul line. No chalk. And it's foul. Just 19 balls for Brett Anderson out of 60 pitches. And, and he's a ground ball. Ground ball to second after an almost double. And he's making it look easy. Two outs. Remind you that Ace Baseball at Comcast Sports that California is brought to you by your California Ford dealers. Ford is the right choice. So here comes James Loney. Six in a row retired for Brett Anderson. He's allowed two hits, a single to Pedroia in the first, and a single to Siriaco in the third, and that's it. And first pitch strike to Loney. On the ground, right at Pennington. That'll do it. Seven in a row retired by Anderson. Bottom of the fifth coming up. Six nothing athletics.
Sausages. Pick up Evergood Sausages at your local grocery store today. Bottom of the fifth inning with the A's leading six to nothing over the Red Sox. Donaldson, Drew, and Norris here in the bottom of the fifth. A nice relaxing day at the ballpark and a good crowd as we've just been told 25,314 66,000 for the three games. Breast cancer awareness day. Loney shading his eyes on the move into foul territory. And he's got it for out number one. Here's our McDonald's true stories. This day 10 years ago, the Ace Stork 20 game win streak hit number 19. And there it is. Miguel Tejada up the middle. That was in the ninth inning. That was a walk off win, and the place was going nuts. Greg Myers for the Ray Durham. So that made it 19 consecutive wins. Amazing watching Jason Grimsley give up the game winning hit. He did that in back to back games spread out over three days. The off day on Tuesday, then Monday, Wednesday. Nice afternoon for Stephen Drew. A home run in the second, an RBI single in the third. The home run to right, the single to left. Facing Andrew Miller. 72 runs scored in the last nine games for the Athletics. And on the pitching side, an ERA just a shade over two. You're just not going to lose very often. You keep doing that. Gomez right near the bag at third has it. Two outs here in the bottom of the fifth. I think Kurt Young is very happy to be on this side of the diamond. Now, back with the A's after one year back in Boston, but he has done a terrific job with the A's pitchers as he did prior to going to Boston last year. Might stick around for a while. It's been that good. Jay Griffin last night said he felt great. He said today is the biggest day, the day after making the first start in almost a month. Norris has lined out and struck out. Not close, 3 and 0. Oh. Three hits, the one on the bunt by Salt Lamaki, and then two in the inning, in which uh, Nilas actually was out at the plate, so he should have given up no runs, but Nilas was called safe. So another walk issued by the Red Sox. And he had his pitches working. The, the slow curveball, I think that's one of the, the pitches that had to be special for him. And it's getting the strikeout of Ross, but. When you miss about a month and you come back and you're throwing a curveball for strikes the way he was, elevating his fastball, cutter to change up, had all of his pitches working, seven solid innings, no walks. And he's starting their next string of starting pitchers, giving up two or fewer walks. Pennington singled and scored had a stolen base in the fourth inning. Hey, swing and a miss. Andrew Miller, the pitcher, is six foot seven. He was a first round draft pick of the 
Detroit Tigers. He was the sixth pick overall in 2006. Well, 14 retired consecutively by NJ Griffin before this. The shift was on. And Sotomayor with two outs in the fifth inning. In a perfect game, laid down a perfect bug. I thought Bob Melvin said it best that, of course, the shift was on. But he said if he'd have played his third baseman in normal position, it had taken away the bunt. And we have seen that happen. Was it Toronto with Lord? Right, Lord, who would stay in his normal position, and after a strike, he would move over in the right field. Figured that would take a bunt possibility away. But I think the biggest factor is that the A's were employing a shift, and it was there for the taking. Even though he got booed the next couple of bats. But. Norris had a huge jump. It almost seems like in this series the Red Sox pitchers. Maybe they're just not good at holding runners because they've done a terrible job. At it. I mean. A's are stealing bases without a throw. I mean look at that jump. And you see Miller he didn't even look at it. He didn't even look. He maybe out of the corner of his eye he might have looked over but. He had already committed to go to the plate. Fouled off the foot of Pennington. Mariners still leading the Angels two to nothing in the top of the sixth inning. Not close, two and two. Outfield shallow and right and center for Pennington. And another foul ball. This one headed down toward the A's bullpen. So Miller on in relief of Matsusaka. And he gets Pennington swinging for the final out. So the A's, for the first time, do not score in an inning, but they still lead 6 0 after five. Ace Baseball and Comcast Sports at California is brought to you by Hyundai. Hyundai Sunday is brought to you by your Bay Area Hyundai dealers. Glad you mentioned that again because I think Seth Smith should do some commercials for Hyundai. I think so. Just run them on Sunday. So here's Jose Iglesias. Smith with a home run in the first, Drew in the second. Brad Anderson is rolling along. 63 pitches through five innings. And throwing strikes. Even on a 3-2 to LeVarnway. Throws him a hook, strikes him out. 
He has retired 13 out of the last 14. And the last seven in a row. I think he is remembering his performance at Fenway in 2009. And he's had, I mean, that, that was an off the charts yeah. performance. He's had some good starts against the Red Sox. But you know, the one in 2009 was sensational. Three starts this year, and he has been locked in right from the get go. And he's going to walk Glacius. Let's go back to 2009. It was July 6th. And when you pitch a shutout Fenway Park, and especially if you're a left hander, that is special. There is Kevin Euclid. The puppy. Where are they now? That was exactly right. Thank you to that. No more Garcia Parr's return. That was fun. To Fenway. And they said, Brett Anderson deserves all the credit, and he did. So, leadoff man Siriaco steps in. He has one of the two hits off Anderson. 70 pitches for Brett. Outside corner strike. Change from the four seam grip on the fastball. Maybe to the slider curveball. Slider. So we can see those grips. Great center field camera. Hitters can't, yeah. which is good. Dr. Schwartz is behind the uh, down on the tunnel. Yeah. Way again. The great Dr. Serving. Schwartz. That's right. yeah. Watching the game, his wife Patty and Watching the boys play great baseball. Out at second, Pennington throw the first, not quite in time. Syriaco runs very well. But Pennington hanging in there and then having that strong arm. And you saw what Pennington did there, Ray, because it was a not hit quite so hard. He played the ball behind uh -huh. second base yep. and let the bag protect him a little right. bit. Yes, and then push off the bag as well after he caught it. And you're right, get out of the way and. That's a very good point because with a bag, there's not much the runner can do after he hits the bag. And so he steps off. There's the bag. And there's the throw, and he's going to complete it anyway. Maybe the hitter stumbles a little bit out of the batter's box, and might as well take a chance as long as it's an accurate throw. And Penny is usually very accurate, especially from the shorter distance at second. But you can use that bag to yeah. protect you. Just. You're, you're further away from the runner, obviously, but the bag is really hard. Oh, very, very. And it does not feel good if you <laughs> slide into it and then over it, which is what a slide a, a, a runner's going to do if he's trying to take a guy out. Drew racing over. He's not going to get it, and it lands right on the line. And Syriaco's caught, and now he's got to scramble back to second. Syriaco was right in the middle between second and third, and he was lucky to get back. Well, Jude threw the ball to third, and by the time that happened, it was going to be tough for Donaldson to throw back and get him at second base. But Sirianco ran almost like they figured they're just going to keep running. The ball is going to be fouled and get back plenty of time, but it landed right on the line, and that was the best play for Drew. If he throws behind him, Sirianco might have continued on to third. So by throwing to third, it keeps the runners at first and second. But this one, unlike the ball of Elas hit a couple of innings ago. Uh, last inning that is stayed fair. So the first scoring threat against Anderson first and second one out for Pedroia. Pedroia is one for two. Here is a smattering of let's go Red Sox. Yeah, they're coming to life. And the A's fans cheering louder. One and one now to Pedroia. Single and a ground out.
breaking ball stays just a touch high. It's amazing. Pedroia hit a similar curveball to right field for a base hit in his first at bat, yet Brad Anderson's tried to throw the same curveball, it's been a little bit high, but Pedroia has not offered at pitches that he probably would be popping up, not really driving the ball the way he did in the first. Missed again, and now it's three and one. Cody Ross is the on deck hitter. Dre bounces one. Donaldson's got it. Throw to second, and he's safe at second. Thought Sednick did not slide, but he's called safe, and the bases are loaded. Donaldson with a sensational play. So it would be a base hit for Pedroia. Great play by Donaldson. The only play was to try to get the runner at second, and you're right, but Sednick probably be thought he was going to be no, rounding the bag seven, and going to third Ross. on what he thought was going to be an RBI single, but instead Donaldson diving. And that's how close it was for Podsednik being very embarrassed by not sliding into second. First pitch to Cody Ross and the curveball in first strike. Well, we mentioned earlier Ross dangerous against left handed pitching. In fact, his name came up in a lot of trade rumors. Teams in the pennant race looking for a right handed hitter. The Red Sox did not trade him. Cook starting to heat up here in the sixth inning. Line drive, base hit left field. One run scores. Podsednik is being waved home. The throw is right there, and he's out. And he's out by a lot. Sensational throw by Cespedes in the air, right there, and it wasn't even close. A run does score. Podsednik didn't have to slide in either. Now, Jerry Reister made a major yeah, mistake, yeah. the third base coach. Cespedes last night showed his arm strength and accuracy, and he does even better this afternoon. Close line throw to the plate, and Podsednik out by 10 feet. But, but uh, Cespedes had to be shocked that the runner was even going. And this time, Norris catching the ball plenty of time to go after Podsednik before he gets to the plate. Yeah, when you're down six, and now five, that have been the bases loaded and one out. And he ran right into an out. So even when the Red Sox do something good, yeah. it turns out bad. Well, what a throw by Cespedes. It was not shallow left field either. So this is Mauro Gomez. So Mike Gallego, who is very aggressive at third, coaching third base with JD or Stephen Drew up earlier, the base at the left field, he held up Moss because he knew he didn't have a chance. So in a similar situation here, although the A's up as much as they are, but the great thing about Cespedes, we've known he has had the strong arm. It's the accuracy, and now all of a sudden, he is making the strong but yet accurate throw in. Well, that's a catcher's delight there to get a ball that early. With the runner coming down, you can do so many different things. So one and two to Gomez. The ball bounces away, and Ross went a long ways off first. But you know what's great about Norris, and we've seen him do it before. Not only does he apply the tag, but kind of pushes the runner yeah. away from the plate. And a good block here by Norris. Gets rid of the mask, and he looked a second to see if that runner was going to advance. If he had thrown immediately the first with Carter covering, if he were there, then might have gotten the aggressive Ross. Another foul ball. 
Well, look how much time Norris had the ball inside catching in the air and then two hands going after. Get off. Of it. <laughs> <laughs> going after put Sednik and. And that even more so with the throw up in front of the plate he had enough time to get it and then go back to the plate. Two two pitch foul back again so. Mauro Gomez giving Anderson a good battle. Next pitch will be. Pitch number 90 for Anderson. Came in with 63. But this is a high stress inning. 26 pitches. Runners go, swing, and a miss struck him out. And that's how the inning ends. The Red Sox get a run. It's now 6 1 8. Coors Light sixth inning. It's time for the Coors Light freeze cam. Coors Light freeze cam is brought to you by Frostbrew Coors Light. It's the world's most refreshing beer. Six to one. The A's lead. Bottom of the sixth inning. We have a new pitcher for the Red Sox when it's time for change. Think speedy oil change and tune up. Your oil change tune up and smog experts. Craig Breslow comes in. Breslow pitched in game one of this series. Third of an inning, gave up three hits, five runs, four earned, and a walk. So an outing to forget for Breslow. And they said they weren't pitching him very much in Arizona, so he was happy to be traded to the Red Sox. He was in the trade that sent Cahill and Breslow to Arizona. And he's acquiring some very good players in the trade. And they're all three here right now. And the trade from Arizona to Boston sent Matt Albers, right handed lever, to Arizona. Scott Podsednik also was in that trade. And then Dimex let him go, and now he's back with Boston. <laughs> Top of the order for the A's. Chris with two walks and a fly out. He has scored twice and he has stolen base. Had a very good series. Gomez, the third baseman, is under it. And that's out number one. Kirk Breslow as an athletic. They called him Never Say No Breslow because it seemed like he was up every game. 
and he never said no. He just kept getting up and pitching and pitched well for the athletics. He did a good job with the athletics. And a very nice guy. Very good foundation raising funds back on the East Coast. He's happened to be back with his good friend Andrew Bailey. Both in the bullpen now of the, the Red Sox. It's kind of telling all the, the games that you're in the careers that coincided with the athletics. Breslow setting up most of Andrew Bailey's saves. Except they went into New York and it was just the reverse. Bailey was pitching and Breslow came in and got Robinson Cano out. I said, wait, wait, what's wrong with this? This is a different scenario. But they've worked very well together with the athletics and now with the Red Sox. Well, the A's got Craig Breslow. They claimed him off waivers from the Minnesota Twins. So he was out there and. Well, that was the, I think I remember that was a mistake because they needed a clear roster spot for somebody. Yeah, and they, they, they left him out yeah, there and put him out there yeah. and the A's claimed him and he was a great addition to the A's staff. Slider outside to Seth Smith. Homer, single walk for Smith. He's with two more home runs today, Smith and Drew. And another full count. Breslow's pitched in the big leagues with the Padres, Red Sox, Indians, Twins, A's, and now back with the Red Sox. So he is bounced around. Sure, when he went to Boston, he had hoped to have a chance to pitch for a better team than what he's been pitching. You for. would have think, yeah. It's not been the case. But Andrew Bailey was excited as much as he did not want to leave the athletics, but decided to go back where his family on the East Coast, wife Amanda, their new baby daughter, and Bill and Lori are couple of favorites the mayor yeah mayor of the east coast now probably that's right so smith strikes out for the second out and we got in-depth sports news for the bay area fan go deep with sports Center. central it's brought to you by at&t uverse and it's coming up tonight at 6 p.m over on our sister station comcast sports in bay area lots of baseball highlights american league they're throwing a few national league highlights as well petaluma little league is on it as they should be, and it's all coming up tonight. Dave Feldman, John Henry Smith will hold six o'clock on Comcast Sportsnet Bay Area. Well, next Sunday, first week in the NFL. You all right with that? Are you excited? It okay. is. Yeah. <laughs> Man, this hot pennant race and. I'm sorry. I just cannot get into it. And I don't want the monitor having football games on either. What are you talking about? Huh? Looked like Jack had a Packers jersey on today. Did not. It was an A's oh, jersey. An I said that to you three times, and you you but wouldn't it, you wouldn't believe but he, me. He would never turn around so I could see the front. So all I could see was green and gold. I told him not to look at you. <laughs> <laughs> he came in with a cheese head. I knew it was what right. he's thinking about. Reddick swings and misses, fires the bat down. Side retired, so Breslow has a three up, three down inning.
of the seventh inning. And the A's are going to go to the bullpen and they're going to bring in the all star Brian Cook. So when it's time for change, think speedy oil change and tune up your oil change tune up and smog expert. So Cook comes in. Game number 56 for him. Last time Cook pitched was Wednesday in Cleveland and he got the save. So he's had some time off. Sure Bob Melvin wants to keep him fresh, ready to go. You know, nice thing about what Ryan Cook has done, he'd, he'd had some struggles, but kind of corrected himself and he figured out what he'd been doing incorrectly. And it's worked great for him because ever since that has happened, making the correction, he's pitched great baseball, good fastball to slider. Two of his very effective pitches. This is Ryan Lavarnway. Zawa starts to throw. So Brett Anderson terrific again six innings gave up the one run. Ran into some trouble in his final inning the sixth. Strike inside corner one and two. Lavarwe is grounded out and struck out. He's one for five in the series. And that one's lined into the glove of a leaping Josh Donaldson, and that's out number one. He made it look easy, but that is very hard with the bright sunshine, the light colored shirts, and a line drive coming at you. And you have to time it perfectly to jump up and take a hit away from the right handed hitter, but. Josh Donaldson with the wraparound sunglasses able to pick it up quickly off the bat. Time has jumped perfectly. So here's Mike Gavilas. Gavilas is 0 for 2 today with a strikeout and a ground out, and he is 1 for 9 in the series. Missed low, 2 and 0. Velas may have swung at ball three and he fouls it back. Five hits, one run. Walking four strikeouts and nice 90 pitches. A lot of them coming in that sixth inning. The ground ball toward Pennington, and that's out number two. Get out another run, though. Yeah, how dare he? Two outs here in the seventh, and James Loney will step up. Now batting, number 22, James Loney. Well, Loney probably trying to get adjusted to new team, new league, new coast, the whole deal. And I asked him about being traded, and he said it wasn't so much a shock that he was traded. It's where he was traded to. He's happy to, to be in Boston. Thought he might be going some other place, and, and as we mentioned on Friday for him to be traded from a big media market in Los Angeles to another one at Fenway in Boston. Best case scenario, two very good teams, at least one that he left, and he said he wasn't playing as much as he had hoped to. So he kind of welcomed the trade. Loney was the first round draft pick of the Dodgers in 2002, 19th pick overall. And he got to the big leagues for the first time in 2006. Seemed like the knock on him. He's a very good defensive first baseman, but people always said, well, he just doesn't hit for a lot of power. He never had huge home run numbers. They look at his size. Well, that's true. <laughs> yeah, you're right. There's been some big players size wise that. Really never had the power. Even Ryan Sweeney, the, the A's had now with the Red Sox. Always looked at his size and said, why is he hitting everything to the left field? 
Had a lot of doubles when the A's went back to Boston. He was late in the league. Now disabled again. Two and two to James Loney. A couple of ground outs to second. And he went around. And Ryan Cook has a three up, three down inning. Finishes it off with a strikeout of Loney. Seventh inning stretch coming up. 6 1 Athletics. is brought to you by Chevrolet and their award-winning cars, trucks, and crossovers. And by Jack in the Box. Get the all-American Jack combo at Jack in the Box. It's a no-nonsense burger with fries and a drink for only $4.99 plus tax at participating stores. Bottom of the seventh inning with the A's leading 6-1 to one over the Red Sox. Number 25,000 today at the ballpark. When it's time for change, think Speedy Oil Change in Tune-Up. Your oil change tune-up and smog expert. So back to the bullpen, Shinichi Tazawa comes in. So Tazawa pitched in game one of this series. Twenty-fourth appearance, good ERA of 1.72. <laughs> good strikeout pitches. He did that in its First appearance in this series. So Cespedes is to lead it off. 0 for 3 with an RBI ground out for Cespedes. First pitch is inside. Mariners still leading the Angels 2 to nothing. Bottom of the seventh inning. Weaver's out of that game. Fouled straight back. The Rangers beat the Indians today, eight to three. Holland over McAllister. And the big story in that one was a young man by the name of Jerkson Profair, who is considered by many to be the top prospect in the minor leagues. He's a middle infielder for the Texas Rangers, and they brought him up. Yeah. And he started today at second base. He's only 19 years old. And what do you think he did in his first at bat? Oh, probably hit a home yes, run. Yes, he did. He hit a home run. The last 19 year old, he hit a home run in his first major league at bat. Gentleman by the name of Ted Tappy in 1950. He's only the third guy to do it. So 19 years old, first major league at bat home run for his name is Jerickson Profair. And unfortunately, I think the A's will probably hear his name a lot. In the future, he's supposed to be a star in the making. His name has already come up a lot in trade. <laughs> yeah. Followed by a no. We're yeah. not we, want, we want him. 
Time now for our Chevron pitching matchup. It's the big series. We are looking forward to it. Starts on Labor Day tomorrow, 1 o'clock. C.J. Wilson and Tommy Malone. Well, you have to remember, it is a day game tomorrow. Yep. 1 o'clock start. Out here on Comcast Sportsnet California. And a couple of very good lefties. One who just signed a mega contract with the Angels after being with the Rangers and up and coming star in Tommy Malone. He has been great. Okay, if I look at this season for the Boston Red Sox and a big celebration, the 100th anniversary, mm -hmm. that might be the most exciting and the only exciting part about the Red Sox 2012 season is it that it's the 100th anniversary. Big celebration. They brought tons of people back, played in the organization for their opener, and just a, a great celebration. But it's been downhill ever since. Been a tough year for the Red Sox. But I guess they figured if it happens every hundred years, it'll be okay. Well, that's true. <laughs> yeah. <that's laughs> Although right now it probably feels like more than yeah. just one year. And probably happy for them as the Cubs celebrated their hundredth a few years ago. They are still waiting for their world championship. 08 was the last time they won. Red Sox 18 before 2004 and then 07. So the Red Sox nation still. Well, it's across the country. See a lot of them always come out to the Coliseum. They've been very quiet this weekend and this season. Both the Yankees and the Red Sox fans. Carter swings and misses and that's out number two. The rest of the pitching matchups in that upcoming series on Tuesday it'll be Granky and Parker. Now that's a night game. And then on Wednesday, Heron and McCarthy. So probably right there. Maybe the biggest series that the A's have had here at home That's right. in a long time. That's right. And I say that simply because it's September and really the A's for the first time since 2006 are in the thick of a pennant race. And if you think about it, that's all fans ever want to talk about. Sure. Getting to the postseason. And I've been reading some comments, and, and I just kind of disagree with some of the, the writers who are saying that it seems like that Lou Wolf wants to trade players, get rid of players, and try to not win so he can move. Lou Wolf, to me, along with the Haas family and the ownership of the, the A's, never seen bigger winners. Remember in 06, how Lou Wolf, how he enjoyed the A's coming off the field in Seattle. and Top step, welcome everybody. You know, owners want to win. They don't want to try to lose so they can do different things with the club, but they're seeing a lot of success this season. And the Haas family took over and enjoyed winning. They had a world championship in 89. The Droya, nice play, flips to first, and that is a heck of a play by Dustin Pedroia to take a hit away from Donaldson. We're on to the eighth. Six one athletics.
brought to you by Cash Creek's Tropical Riches. Win cash and prizes daily through tomorrow. Visit CashCreek.com for details. Six to one, the A's lead, top of the eighth inning. And a new pitcher for the Athletics when it's time for change. Think speedy oil change and tune up. Your oil change tune up and spawn experts. Sean Doolittle comes in, 1 0 with a 3.23 ERA. Doolittle, his first appearance in this series. And even though the A's at this time have a five run lead, if they can get through this inning and still make it that, might see. He's closer in the game, trying to get some work. Well, do little like Cook yep. last pitched on Wednesday, so he's had three days off. You know, talking about Melman after that Thursday game, I think both were off because they had pitched some, so that's why the Thursday game in Cleveland was a big one, even though the A's had a big lead, but still able to hang on a win without the use of availability of a couple of guys in the bullpen. So do little to face. Iglesias, Syriaco, Potsednik here in the top of the eighth inning. And quick work of Jose Iglesias. Doolittle with the strikeout. Time now for a forward right choice. August 21st, the Red Sox honor the late Johnny Pesky at Fenway Pesky, who played, managed, and served as a broadcaster for the Red Sox in a baseball career that lasted more than 60 years. He died August 13th. He was 92 years old. All the Red Sox wore number six. Taps were played, and the number six was cut into the grass out in left field. So Johnny Pesky, you always saw him around the ballpark. Oh, yeah. Great man, great storyteller, and you see him on the right, and uh, he would stay in uniform right until the end. And with the bat in his hand, he didn't use the bat that much, maybe to lean on and tell stories, but he was always out there. And I remember asking him for an autograph. He had an old baseball card. I asked him to sign. And his words were, "You want my autograph? I'm honored." I said, <laughs> yeah. "Of course I do." You know, but you got a pole named after you. <laughs> absolutely, to, to be a really a non-home run hitter, but a foul pole at home run distance, That's named the pesky one. pole. That's right. But a real nice gentleman and uh, you know, reading some of the comments of players who had played there and how much he meant to them. And was always positive talking to the players and Jason Veritek the captain always talked about. Johnny Pesky was always positive and say you're gonna get some big hits and. You know you, you miss somebody like that when he's not around any longer. Even at his age. One and two to Syriaco is outside. Now is Johnny Pesky the guy who just was like a magician with the fungo? No, that was Jimmy Reese. Jimmy Reese, that's Angels. right. That's yes. right. They said he could throw batting practice. He could throw batting practice. He with had the a fungo. He had a fungo that instead of a bat <laughs> being round, he squared it off. It, so it was a square sure. face surface. Like a paddle kind of. And he would pet yeah. <laughs> But there it is. Johnny Pesky, of course, he, he played with the great Ted Williams and Don DiMaggio, some great players for the Red Sox, and seemed choking up, just kind of a slap hitter. And yet there's the pole, the Pesky pole in right field, about, I don't know, 30 feet away, it seems. <laughs> but you can, you don't see a lot of home runs hit right down the right field line at Fenway because of the, the foul pole is there, but you might see a right-hander slice a ball that happens to slice 280, 270 feet down the line, hooks a, our slices around the pole into the seats. 2 2 pitch to Syriaco. He rips one toward left center with Coco on the move. Another good jump by Coco Crisp. So that's out number two. Well, if you've never been to Fenway Park, there's um, certainly a lot of things that jump out, but the shortness of yeah, that pole, and I mean distance from home plate. When I say shortness, you'd be amazed. I mean, if you if you can somehow imagine where that pole would be, like in this ballpark. I mean, figure it's 3:30 down the line here. Move ahead 30 feet. Well, you look about you know? where, where the catcher is warming well, up. Somewhere the in there, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's it's amazing. And then it curves out to be about 400 feet yeah. <laughs> from the the pesky pole. But. Definitely one of the highlights of going there, seeing the green monster in left field and the pesky pole in right field. Bullpens that uh, are prominent in right field. They've done a lot of different things at Fenway, but 
It's a historical sign. It's not going anywhere. Now, would you say that home runs that are hit right down the line, mm -hmm. right past the pesky pole, does it happen more with a right handed hitter or a left handed hitter? I'd say left. Would you? Okay. I'd say left. Just because you don't see that many balls sliced by a right handed. Yeah. I mean, you could take a guy who normally would not hit a lot of home runs, slice one down the line. Easy. But not. To right field, true right field. Carter beats the speedy Pod I like to see a collision back. there. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. Not if I'm Scott Podsednik. So a three up, three down inning for Doolittle. Way. Here's our game summary brought to you by your local Toyota dealers. All about Brett Anderson today, his third start since back to the big leagues after Tommy John surgery. Man, he has been so good. Today, six innings, five hits, one run, one walk, four strikeouts. So he's closing in on winning his first three starts. Matsusaka, on the other hand, not good. Seven hits, six earned runs, three and two-thirds innings, and he threw 97 pitches. So the A's have completely dominated the Red Sox in this series. They've outscored them 33 to four. Mark Melanson steps in, steps to the mound. Melanson is the fourth relief pitcher used. I think the Red Sox are lucky that the rosters got expanded because their bullpen has worked a lot. How many strikeouts today for the A's against Ten. the Reds? <laughs> Doesn't matter. <laughs> what, 14 the A's, last are, night? the A's are making strikeouts. <laughs> Where it just doesn't matter. Just make him a single out. That's yeah. all. Yeah. It's just one out. <laughs> Yesterday, the ace struck out 14 times. <laughs> doesn't matter. They won 7 to 1. Had a 16 strikeout game yeah. earlier. I mean, granted, those two guys, Bob Melvin and bench coach Chip Hale, would love to see more contact, but. I think they have to be happy with the contact they're getting. Yeah. Just seven hits, but six runs today for the A's. Maybe another hit. And that one's to the gap, and Drew is going to have extra bases, and he's going to have a double. Stephen Drew is three for four. Time now for the AT&T U-verse reverse replay. Since he's there, we might as well just talk about him. That is Stephen Drew, his first Oakland A's home run, a no doubter to right field. Yes, he's running hard, but he will enjoy the the daytime here, and he's had a good day also with a base hit to right field, driving home a run, and this double. So a three-hit game and a good day for Stephen Drew. So the A's eighth hit, and here's Norris. 
Norris is looking for his first hit. He's 0 for 2 with a walk. Fouls it straight back. The Tampa Bay Rays won today. Of course, the Rays chasing the A's and the Orioles in that wild card. They won nine to four in Toronto. And Price, David Price, got his 17th win, so he becomes the first 17 game winner in the American League. And Weaver will not get his 17th win today. So, so the Rays now a game and a half behind the Orioles. The Orioles also won. Price over Romero in that game and then you saw the Orioles they beat the Yankees eight to three so Baltimore goes into Yankee Stadium and yep. takes two out of three. So that's a big series for Baltimore. You look at yesterday they'll look back at had a three to one lead yeah. late and the bullpen's been spectacular for the Orioles and let one get away. It could have been tied. But uh, jump back to three games now to two after today's win by the Orioles. They're playing very good baseball. They sure are. Orioles have won 10 out of their last 14 and again two back in the East. I want to play. Yes he does. See there there's tricks too right if you're a bench player you make the manager see you somehow. <laughs> bump into him accidentally with your helmet and your batting gloves on. Norris with a shot right into the glove of Gomez. So that's the first out here in the bottom of the eighth inning. Ace Baseball at Comcast Sportsnet California it is brought to you by Roaring Camp Railroads. Whether it's a steam train through the Redwood Forest or the beach train to Santa Cruz, Roaring Camp is the ride of a lifetime. RoaringCamp.com. Here's Pennington with one out. Cliff is one for three. Quick throw to first by Iglesias. Nice play. Two outs. And we were talking about the Orioles. You know who's playing really well for them is Mark Reynolds. Let's see us. He hit two more home runs today. He had a huge series. He had four home runs in the series. No. And that's a that's yeah. big for the Orioles because he really wasn't doing a whole lot the first four months of the season. Oh, well, Machado is he back at uh, the first base with Machado? Playing? Must be, yeah. So Reynolds leading the Orioles right now. He's got the power. Yeah. Just if he can make contact. See, he'd be perfect for the A's with all the strikeouts. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. Hitting home runs and striking out, a nice combination to win a lot of games. A's trying to unbelievably. It's a 19 over 500. They have already passed the total number of wins of last year. 74 last year. Yeah. 75. Watson reaches down and grabs it, so he keeps the A's off the board. We're headed to the ninth. A's looking for their ninth consecutive win.
Six to one. The A's are trying to finish off the sweep of the Red Sox. And they're going to do it with uh, the closer, Grant Balfour, comes in. So I got Balfour Ray last pitching on Monday in Cleveland. Yeah. So I would think Bob Melvin is happy to get his really his three main relievers, mm -hmm. Cook, Doolittle, and the closer Balfour, in the game today. And you got the three-game series coming up. Then you have an off day Thursday. So Balfour will face Pedroia, Ross, and Gomez. Try to get the Athletics their 76th win and them to hold on to the top wild card spot. Remember, Texas won their game. So if the A's can hang on and win, they will remain three behind the Rangers in the division. First pitch strike from Balfour. So Cook an inning. Do a little an inning and now Balfour after Anderson's six. Tap foul. Top of the ninth at Safeco Field. Mariners two. Angels nothing. Well, the Mariners have their closer in the game, Wilhelmson. So your series next weekend in Seattle will not be an easy one for the Athletics. The Mariners are playing pretty good baseball. Listen to some of the, the experts talking about scheduling and how the Western Division teams, and they said, don't forget about the Mariners yeah. because the Mariners, with the, the scheduling, Interdivisional schedule in September. See them a lot. The A's actually will see each of the three teams in the division home and away the rest of the month yep. and first part of October. Two two pitches, a fastball high. The Rangers will be at Kansas City beginning of this week. Orioles at Toronto. The Rays will host the Yankees. The Tigers will host the Indians and the White Sox will host the Twins. So that's the schedule for the early part of this week for those wild card teams. So the Rangers have a four game series in Kansas City. Pedroia, big swing, just got a piece of it. Well, we have seen, and everybody knows about the Royals, and sure, they might have some September call ups, but. They have a good team. Yeah. And they will not take anybody. You should never take them lightly for sure because they are that good. And it's going to get better, especially in the in the central division. As the young players get a little bit more experience. That one's ripped to right center field and it's going to get down. Reddick backhands it. Pedroia digging for second. And he is going to be just in ahead of the tag. The Reddick was able to cut it off, set up quickly, and he made a very, very good throw. That's the amazing thing about this play because it looked like just an easy double, but after he catches the ball to stop and make the perfect throw to second base, the accuracy one hop, and if Pedroia cannot hang on with his hand, he's out because the throw was there, and Drew stayed with the tag, but Pedroia grabbing the bag with his right hand and then clinching, staying on, and Drew is going to make sure if he came off the bag at all. But what a play, what a throw by Reddick. And Pedroia knows as well as anybody how well the right fielder for the A's can play. Former Red Sox. Here's Cody Ross. Ross had an RBI single in the sixth. Takes a strike. It was his 68th RBI of the year. He lined a single to left. That was also the ball that Patsedic was thrown out at home yeah. trying to score. Suspect has made a very, very strong throw. Strike two. 
Ace post game live coming up after the ball game. We'll also have a player interview from here at the Coliseum. When you've won eight in a row and you're looking for nine in a row, there's usually plenty of choices for post game interviews. Well, I was going to say that when you've won eight in a row and trying to win nine in a row and you're televised, you're doing a lot of interviews. <laughs> That's a good thing. We like <laughs> doing interviews. Because <laughs> that means the club's having success and want to hear what they have to say. Hit hard to the right side. Pennington has it. Ross is retired. Pedroia the third. Well, make sure you join us tomorrow, 1 o'clock, right here on Comcast Sportsnet California. It's a big series, folks. I'm calling it a big series. Absolutely. You calling it a big series? I don't have any question in my mind that it's a big series. Nice. Wilson and Malone is the matchup. Remember, we got complete A's coverage every night on Sportsnet Central at CSNCalifornia.com. So, a struggling C.J. Wilson just got his 10th win after about six weeks of not being able to get a win. If I'm calling this is game 133. I'm calling every game. Yeah, that's true. Starting Let's tomorrow, do it. a I big mean. game, big series because they're all big, especially the way the A's are playing and the way they've moved up in the standings. The Rangers are on their flight back to Kansas City from Seattle, Washington, and they're, they have the internet service. They might see on there that the A's are on the verge of winning their ninth consecutive. They're not going away. I said Seattle. I mean, from uh, let's see, where were they? Today? In Cleveland. Cleveland. Well, they might already be there. Might be down at the plaza having dinner. That's right. The Angels will be flying from Seattle here. And the Red Sox will head to Seattle. Want to know to Mauro Gomez. He's continue to stay close enough to the Rangers. Hey, go for the division and settle for the wild card. Right? That's the best way to look at it. Swing and a miss. No miss. Chased. One and two. On deck is Ryan Lavardway. A good slider from Grant Balfour and a little tilt to it plus moving away from the right hander. So the crowd into it. One out here in the top of the night. Going hard, 94 miles an hour. Think back to late July when there was talk because the A's were having a tremendous month winning the 19 games with the trading deadline at the 31st. One guy was mentioned, number 50. There was talk to him around the league, around baseball, that he might be traded to a contender. Well, he stayed with a contender. Reddick going back, still going back. He's got it. Sacrifice fly as Pedroia will trot home, but it's out number two and the score is now six to two. So Gomez gets the sacrifice fly. Now the chance of sweep by the A's fans being heard throughout the Coliseum. Now by the good weekend. Fans have had a lot of fun. Here's Lavardway. So it's always good when the brooms are out. That's it's always good. Generally they, a good sign. They yeah. come out with a four-run lead with two outs in the ninth inning. That's the only time you want to make them visible. The only time I didn't like seeing the Bruins in 1990 when the A's were heading back to Cincinnati to start the World Series and the airport departing back to Cincinnati, the brooms were out. Yeah, that was not so good. Uh, the brooms worked in reverse. <laughs> The A's fans had to use their brooms to brush away the brooms of the Reds. If they won four straight. They won it wire to wire. The A's with the crowd standing, 25,000 plus. 
Trying to see if their guys can make it nine in a row. Just a touch outside. So two and one the count. The Angels have scored a run in the top of the ninth, and they're still batting. It's two to one. Now that gentleman had it all going on. Hat glove ice cream and <laughs> cheering for the final out. He's a multitasker. <laughs> Monday Sunday says Smith he's done it again today and got the A's on the board in the first inning with a two run home run. Another foul ball by the Barnway. And the pitch fouled straight back. So Ryan Lavarnwe is putting together a pretty good at bat. Well, he's got a count in which he can just sit fastball. With the four run lead, two and two count. Al Ford would not think wants to throw anything but a fastball. But I guess if he could throw a curveball or a slider close, he could get this right out. Slider. And Kelly Shopik was removed from the roster. They traded so they could make room for LeVar Way. They wanted to see him behind the plate. And he was in there today after the aging last night. Tag on him, ball is in the dirt, and that's how the ball game comes to an end. Red Sox do get a run, but not nearly enough. A's win it six to two, and that is win number nine, consecutive win number nine for the Athletics. So they sweep the Boston Red Sox, and they just roll on and get ready for the Angels in what should be a huge series, and we are looking forward to that. So the Real A's big. are red hot. As they get today, win number 76. They are 19 games over 500. You've been watching Oakland A's baseball at Comcast Sportsnet, part of the NBC Sports Group. Don't go away. A's post game live with Henry Wolford and Shooty Babbitt starts right now.